Life According to Riley, and it's written and illustrated by Felicia Cannon. It was a warm spring day, and I was sitting in the passenger seat of my owner's car. The hot sun was shining on my face, and the wind was blowing across my velvety ears and whipping my pink lips back, showing my teeth. It looked like a smile, and it was. I love riding in the car, but the car stopped. My ears flopped down at the sides of my freckled face. My owner reached over to open my door and without looking at me yelled, get out. I jumped out of the car and I wagged my tail. I waited for him to follow me, but the door slammed. Tiny pebbles flew from the tire, spraying me in the face. The car was speeding away. Ouch, wait for me, I hollered. I ran as fast as my short legs would go, but I still couldn't catch the car. Gasping for breath, I gave up the chase. The car with my owner faded around the corner in a cloud of dust. Why did he leave me? I panted. I'll just wait for him under this tree in the shade and catch my breath. My brown eyes scanned the dusty road for my owner's car. I waited a long time and began to feel really hot and very, very thirsty. Somewhere nearby, I heard the sound of running water. I couldn't wait any longer. I followed the sound. As I was trotting down the sidewalk, I saw a lady in front of a house filling a watering can. Could I have some of that, please? I barked quietly, approaching her. Smiling sweetly, she looked up at me. My eyes watched the water as my tongue hung out of my dry mouth. Are you thirsty, sugar? I sat up very straight and barked aloud, yes! The woman seemed to understand my raspy bark, so she rinsed out a bowl that was nearby. She chuckled at me as I filled it. I happily wagged my entire back end. Thank you, I howled as I started to drink. The woman laughed at me again. My tongue eagerly lapped at the cool water. That was really good, I thought as I licked my dripping lips. Where did you come from, sugar? Are you lost? I wish you could tell me. I stared at her sadly. Let me see if I can help you. Your owner is probably very worried and searching for you. She said with a concerned smile. The kind lady didn't know that my owner left me here. He has left me places before, but never this far from home. Let's go for a walk. That would be great. Walking's, walking is my favorite thing besides food. I howled excitedly, turning in circles. She clipped the leash to my tight black collar that was around my neck and said, let's go. Happily, I marched down the sidewalk. Do you know who owns this sweet dog, she asked people. We encountered along the way in the neighborhood. Nobody knew. After hours of searching for my owner, I was thirsty again. I was tired and my paws hurt. Maybe my owner's not coming back, I thought sadly. I took another long drink from the lady's porch, and when I looked up again, I heard the woman talking on the phone. Is this the animal shelter, she asked. I found a dog in front of my house, and I can't locate its owner. I listened to the woman talking as I snoozed lazily on her porch, and after a short time, she sat down next to me. With my eyes filled with tears, I thought about everything that had happened to me that day. The woman seemed to understand how I was feeling, and she scratched my ears and rubbed my white fur. And soon, a brown truck pulled into the driveway. I jumped up from the place on the porch and barked loudly. Someone is here. Maybe it's my owner. But it wasn't my owner. A man I didn't know got out of the truck. He had a leash in his hand. I walked toward him slowly with my head down and my tail wagging. It had been such a long day. Clouds started moving in and rumbles of thunder could be heard in the distance. The cooler evening wind and approaching storm made me shiver. More than anything, I just wanted to go home. I lifted my head up and thought, he must be here to take me home. Come on, girl. It's all right, he said impatiently. He quickly slipped the leash over my head and guided me to the open door of his waiting truck. Happily, I leapt in and I laid down on the seat. It was almost dark and the rain clouds were quickly filling the sky when the man and I drove off down the road. We left the woman standing on her porch. 
She's not smiling anymore, I thought. In fact, she looks sad now. I'm going to miss her. I turned to the driver beside me and hoped he was taking me home. Just then, the rain began to fall. The trip in the truck was long and quiet, except for the squeaking windshield wipers. Eventually, we pulled into a parking lot in front of a long, low, white building. This is not my home, I barked with surprise. The man opened the door and pulled me out of the truck into the rain. We were headed toward the building. I smelled dogs and heard them too. Lots of dogs. I pulled away from the man, but he was strong and he held my leash tightly. He was pulling me into the door of the building. I was pulling away with all my might. I'm afraid, I howled. It was so loud in there. The man didn't even seem to notice. I yelped loudly. The man yanked the leash with both hands. The cage dog jumped angrily at their gates as I was dragged past them. I was tugged into an empty cage at the end of the hall. He pulled me inside the gate and closed with a slam. The big hall echoed with the terrifying sounds of barking dogs, the rain hitting the metal roof. My body shook all over and my skinny white tail was fearfully between my legs. I was scared, wet, cold, and lonely. Why am I here? I just want to go home. I whined loudly. In the days that passed, many people visited the animal shelter. They were choosing dogs to become parts of their family. Every day, strangers would approach my cage and they would call me by my name. Yes, they knew my real name. How did you know my name? I thought, lifting my head from the floor. I didn't know it at the time, but they did find my owner and he told them my name. Was he coming for me? I let my tail wag hopefully for the first time since coming to the shelter. But many more days passed and he never came. I lost hope of ever going back home. I was so sad. I ignored the people who approached my cage. Maybe my owner didn't want me anymore. Maybe no one wanted me. With tears in my tired eyes, I laid myself down in the back of the cage, curled myself into a tight ball, and began to whimper. The kind people at the shelter cared, cared for all of my needs every day, but this wasn't my home. I heard two workers at the shelter saying that it was so sad because my time was up. No one wanted to adopt me. My time was up? What does that mean? My thoughts were interrupted by a familiar voice. Hi, sugar. You ready to go to your new home? And when I looked up, I recognized that gentle smile. It belonged to the kind lady who found me. I was so happy to see her friendly face. She always called me sugar. I, wa I wagged my tail and rushed to the gate to meet her. The volunteers from the shelter opened the lock. Come on, sugar. Let's go home, she said. The gate swung open and the kind woman bent down to hug me. I kissed her gently on the cheek and we both smiled as I followed her closely out of the building. The day began dark and cloudy, but as I started down the gravel road driving away from the shelter, the sun moved from the clouds, the storm was over, and the sun was shining brightly on me. Did you say home? I waited so long to hear that word. On the drive back to the familiar yellow house, the lady talked to me the whole time and occasionally she would scratch my head. I stuck my head out the window as we drove down the road and once again, I was under a clear, cloudless blue sky. The warm sun was shining on my face and the wind blew my lips back to show my teeth. It looked like a smile because it was. I was finally going to my new home, and as we drove along, I wondered what my new family would be like. We were greeted by an excited, smiling faces of five children and two dogs. I stepped out of the car with the woman, and she spoke softly to me. This is your home now, she said. You, you want me? I whined, as if she understood my question. The woman bent down to look at me and said softly, you are family now, and we will love you forever and ever. Tears came to my eyes as I played with the children and the dogs. 
I could imagine how happy I would be in my new home. Someone wanted me. It was a happy ending to a new beginning in my life. Oh, and I got a new name too, Riley, and it suits me just fine.